Hey, this is Kevin Pollack, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. But I guess you knew that, didn't you? Unless, of course, you lost your head. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by the writer and the director of The Hollow, Miles Doliak. How are you doing? I'm well, sir. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. So, uh, you mentioned this is your uh, second film, The Hollow. That's correct. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, uh, a couple years ago... A couple years ago, we shot a wonderful little film called The Historian uh, that also starred William Sadler alongside John Cullum and Linus O'Connor and Falling Skies, Colin Cunningham, a great group of folks. Um, so that one's out now on all the major streaming sites, iTunes and Amazon, a Google Play and the like. So be sure to check that out if you have a chance. Definitely. Uh, let us know what uh, The Hollow is about for people not familiar yet. Sure. Uh, the Hollow is a Southern noir murder thriller. Basically, uh, the daughter of a U.S. congressman is passing through a small town in Mississippi through a series of strange circumstances, and she gets caught up um, in a really bad situation and gets murdered uh, alongside her fiancé. And that high-profile murder uh, brings the FBI to our tiny town in Mississippi, which is fraught with many deep, dark secrets uh, and the FBI has to sort of pull back the layers of the onion to unravel this investigation. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is uh, essentially yes-men to a shadowy figure uh, who lives on the outskirts of town in a grand antebellum mansion. Um, and he seems to sort of be uh, pulling the, the, screen, the strings or working the machinations of everything that goes on in the town. And the FBI agents themselves have their, their own share of problems. The lead agent, Vaughn Sillinger, played by James Callis, is a raging alcoholic with a complicated past, and uh, so he's not exactly on his A game either. So it's a lot of complicated personalities thrown together in this tragic situation, and and uh, trying to make sense of it of it all. Mm -hmm. Was there any? Th uh, did you have this idea for a long time for this movie, or was there any specific thing that inspired it? Um, I, I always wanted to write a, a southern noir crime drama. I'm from the state of Mississippi, and we have a rich literary heritage uh, made up of folks like William Faulkner and Tennessee Williams and Eudora Wealthy and Shelby Foote and others. I've always liked the work of uh, writers like Cormac McCarthy. I really loved the Coen brothers' interpretation of uh, No Country for Old Men. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, sort of the kicker for me was the first season of True Detective when I, when I just saw how great Southern Gothic could be. Um, and so I sat down to write uh, The Hollow sort of as I was watching that season one of True Detective, I, after the historian too, my first film, which was really more character driven, uh, sort of a chamber drama set in academia, uh, I wanted to write something with, that was immediately more marketable. Uh, and, and these types of films have always done pretty well. Uh, films like, say, A Time to Kill or, or Midnight, The Garden of Good and Evil. Um, and I wanted to write something that was that was along that line and it sort of harkened back to some of my literary heroes from here in my home state. Mm -hmm. So it, so it, the, the idea was percolating for a bit, um, but then I just sat down and said, hey, I need to put this on paper. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it about uh, Mississippi itself? And actually some of the stuff you mentioned there all are uh, like very moralistic, but yet it's with like a lot of flawed characters. Would you say that is uh, kind of the idea? Yeah, and I think that, I think the same is true of of the state of Mississippi and the Deep South in general. I mean, obviously, it's uh, the Deep South has a complicated and and dark history. No no question about that. But there's a lot of inherent beauty in the geography and the culture and the people as well. It's this really complex tapestry that I think is absolutely rife. Uh, for drama, so it, it was really the perfect setting for for this type of film, which is, in a way, it's kind of, kind of like an like an old school western, um, a kind of moralizing western. I think story about redemption, um, characters fall and characters rise, and characters trying to overcome their baser inclinations. So Mississippi was really the perfect setting for that kind of story. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that they need my endorsement, but the the first season of a uh, uh, True Detective, uh, for me, I think that might be the best season of any uh, TV show. Uh, I think it is truly one of the one of the great accomplishments of of television, certainly in recent memory. I mean, it, it's 
it was just absolutely beautiful and, and powerful and brilliantly acted and written and directed and shot. Uh, so I, I would tend to agree with you there. Mm-hmm. Now, second Perhaps season. That's the best work to Matt McConaughey has ever done in my opinion. Yeah, he was uh, fantastic. In despite it. his Oscar, I just thought his, his work in that was absolutely chilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always think uh, Woody Harrelson's uh, overlooked uh, for True Detective because his character's not like as uh, uh, sexy or whatever as uh, as Matthews, but uh, it's a little underplayed, and I think he does such a, a great job in it, and sometimes he's overlooked. I completely agree. I mean, Woody is kind of like the straight man, you mm-hmm. know, in the, in the series, and uh, he, his character, yes, it's not as showy, it's not as much, you know, acting gymnastics, but uh, I think without Woody's sort of grounding, foundational kind of role in the series, Matthew's character would be able to do what he does, so uh, I, I agree, he's absolutely critical, and his work was really, really fantastic in the show. Yeah. You have an amazing cast for The Hollow. You mentioned uh, William Sadler, and that you've worked with him before, and uh, William Forsyth, always one of my favorites, anytime I see him uh, pop up in anything, I'm, I'm, I know it's at least he'll be good in it, and uh, so how um, how how is it working with William Sadler? Since you worked with him twice, you must uh, you must have a good relationship. I, I absolutely love Bill Sadler, and and uh, at this point, it's hard to imagine doing a film without him. He's such a pro, such a brilliant actor. Uh, he brings uh, such a, such levity to the set. He's kind of a, a jokester, and uh, he's always laughing and, and having a good time. But when the cameras roll, he's absolutely in it. Uh, he's there to serve your vision. Uh, he has completely trusted me in, as a director when, you know, quite frankly, on my first feature, I hadn't earned his trust, but he read my script. He believed in, in the character and what I had written and, and he came down here and, uh, he sort of put himself at my mercy. Um, so I, I have an incredible amount of, of respect for Bill and, and I'm proud to, to now call him a friend as well as a colleague in this business. Uh, and his work in, in this film and in the hollow in both films really, but, but in the hollow, it's, it, it, it's so refreshing and, and, and rich and, and perhaps not exactly what you would expect from a small town sheriff. There's so many layers to what he does, uh, with the role. Um, he doesn't have as much screen time or, uh, or, or as, as kind of like Woody in, in, uh, in true detective or as many acting gymnastics. But uh, but he absolutely makes the most of what's there on the page, and uh, he's just I just can't say enough good things about Bill Sadler. Mm-hmm. And, um, for uh, when you first had him in in uh, in the historian, and you mentioned that you know uh, he really liked the script and everything. What was that like for you for to have you know a veteran actor who's uh, a tremendous actor to, uh, to to take to your script and, uh, and 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 be in your film to begin with? Well, it was an education, really. Uh, Bill and I had done a film together. Uh, we were both in the cast of a film that was at South by Southwest about four years ago, a film called Sea Girl Run, uh, directed by a good buddy of mine, Nate Meyer. Uh, we didn't have scenes together, but as we were trying to cast the role of this curmudgeonly uh, aging classics professor, jaded classics professor, um, Bill's name came up in my discussions. I was kind of getting Nate advice, and... Nate made an introduction, and I sent the script to Bill, and he liked it and, and immediately signed on, and it, it was really an education for me. In the first two days of shooting The Historian, we were shooting at this gorgeous historic home in downtown Hattiesburg in this well-appointed dining room, these scenes with, with Bill Sadler and John Cullum, uh, the great Broadway and television film actor, probably best known as Holling and Cooler on Northern Exposure. And these, these two guys are playing father and son for the second time. They had done it in a, in a show called Roswell. Um, and they have these glorious scenes together, these lovely little duets. And um, Bill's father in the show, in the, in the movie, is suffering from Alzheimer's and literally losing his mind and his identity day by day. And, and Bill's character is trying to sort of hold it, hold it together and care for him and hold his life together, both professionally and personally. And, uh, their scenes together were, I mean, what a way to dive into your first feature by watching those two men work their magic over the course of two days. So mm-hmm. I was really, really fortunate to have them both in that regard. Yeah. And um, obviously you have you, you have confidence being a director, but um, when you have um, when you have a veteran actor like that or any veteran actor, um, how do you how do you go about directing them? And are they uh, are, are they um, like um, 
<clears throat> are they receptive to like uh, different suggestions? Well, it's 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 it's, it's kind of a delicate dance uh, because I mean, look, an actor like William Sadler or Cullum or, or William Forsythe, these guys have been doing this, been involved in movies a heck of a lot longer than I've been directing movies. Um, but on the one hand, it's just about casting the right person to begin with. It's about casting the actor whose instincts mesh with what's on the page. So that's a huge part of it. Uh, and then to some degree or another, it's bringing them in and let them do, letting them do what they do. Um, but, you know, if you want to push them in a, in a slightly different direction, um, you have to at first be respectful of their, their history uh, and their ability and their experience in the business. Uh, but on the other hand, I, that, that experience leads them to know that at the end of the day, if you don't trust the director, if you don't trust what's on the page, you shouldn't have signed on to the project. So an actor like Bill Sadler, anytime I asked him to do something a little differently than what he was doing, he was completely receptive and, and willing to do it. Um, and sometimes you just have to tell an actor, Hey, look, trust me, this may be against your initial inclination, but I'm just asking you to go with it here. And, and I've been fortunate that every actor that I've worked with up to this point in my career as a director has been willing to do that, even if they didn't necessarily think, hey, that was the right choice. Or, you, you know, you say, hey, yes, hey, let's do this. You do one your way, and then you do one my way. and We'll see what comes out in the editing room, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but these actors have been, been around a long time, like Bill Sadler or, or Bill Forsythe. Uh, they understand the game. They understand that at the end of the day, you have to put your faith in the director and... and uh, because the director's name is going to be forever attached, inextricably attached to the final product. And hey, if it goes wrong, and well, it's on the director; it's not on the actor. Um, so, so they've all they've all been ultimately very trusting. But at the same time, I feel like I have to come to them with a certain amount of respect for their experience, mm-hmm. uh, their many long years in the business. And, and so, anytime I ask them to do something, uh, I approach it with that in mind. Mm-hmm. Now, I've always been a huge fan of William Forsythe, and I know him a little bit for, uh, from the convention scene. Uh, well, in L.A. one time, we were, I say, booth buddies. My booth was next to his. But um, I always think he's kind of intimidating. We see him, but he's like a really nice guy, even though he's super cool. Um, yeah. So what was it like uh, to, to work with William Forsythe? Well, he's, he's absolutely fantastic in this movie. And what what's, William Forsythe is this fascinating dichotomy. I mean, when, when the cameras are rolling, he's this... He's this intense, focused, you know, utterly professional, no nonsense guy. He's there giving you 110%. He doesn't want any distractions. He's he's pouring his heart and soul into the thing. And and yes, he can be very intimidating. But it but that intimidation is in the service of giving you absolutely the best performance uh, that he can muster. And you and you know that you know going in. And and then the, the then the minute the cameras are off. He's the sweetest, nicest, most lovable guy you can possibly imagine. He's a teddy bear of a guy, and he's, you know, he's buying drinks, you know, at the bar for everybody and the crew, and, and it's, 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 it's really fascinating to watch, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he's really perfect for this role in, um, in The Hollow. He's, he's sort of our heavy, he's sort of our, our main antagonist, and, um, and that voice and those eyes, it's just, it just absolutely nails what we were looking for. Uh, he's he's scary as hell, <laughs> and uh, I think I think audiences are going to absolutely eat up what he's doing in this film. And I, we were we were really really uh, blessed to have him and to have guys like when you get to see William Forsythe and William Sadler and things together. That's just that's just magic, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys bringing all their years and their experience and their talent to bear with your words and your script, and um, it's something to behold, for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, have you uh, written both the movies you've directed? I did write both movies, yes. Yeah. I was just, uh, do you think that you would prefer it that way, to uh, to direct something that you've written so you, you know how, how it should it should go, as opposed to uh, um, directing something, you know, from someone else's script? I, well, it's, it's funny. I've, I've been asked to direct a, a film based on a script that I didn't write called Comes an Angel that, that we hope to shoot this upcoming year uh, by Lisa Bruce, who is our executive producer on The Hollow, um, most most well-known for her work as producer on The Fury of Everything. Um, so that will be my first script to direct that I didn't write. But I, I do very much like script, directing scripts that I've written. 
because I feel like it gives me a great deal of freedom and flexibility. Um, something happens on the day. If an actor comes up with something that's better than what's on the page, as a writer, I have the ability to say, yeah, let's do that. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, it, whereas with somebody else's script, you, you have to be a lot more judicious. Um, some writers are, are, are closer to their material than others. Some writers want it exactly as written on the page. Some writers are a little bit more flexible. But what I love about directing something that I've written is not, not only am I intimately familiar with it, I, I know how I want it to go, the various beats, I, I know the journeys of these individual characters, but it also allows me to say, hey, if something's not working, let's change it. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a luxury you don't necessarily get with a script you didn't write. Mm-hmm. Now, you being from Mississippi, uh, how much of you is in the script? Is there any any of the particular characters, or maybe all all the characters, different aspects of you? But uh, is any of it like personal to you? Yeah, I, I kind of call it my fever dream of my version of life in the deepest part of the Deep South. I grew up in a town called Hattiesburg, Mississippi, which comparatively is not that small. Um, it's maybe seven thousand people, but by Mississippi standards, you know, a lot of towns of you know, 500 people, 5,000 people. So Hattiesburg is a larger town in Mississippi. Uh, but traveling around Mississippi as, as a younger person and and sort of seeing all the different layers of daily life and the different personalities, you know, you sort of soak that in. And, and some of those personalities are, are are certainly in the hollow. And, you know, there, there's nobody that's altogether based on actual individuals, but, but there's a lot of um, experiential uh, stuff there, you know, brushes I've had with people or experiences that, that I had growing up in the Deep South, uh, the culture of the Deep South, and all that stuff is, is, is sure it's right on the page. Has the Hollow been uh, seen uh, by audiences yet? Have you uh, screened it in front of anyone? Uh, no, we, we are in the process of submitting the film to festivals right now, um, and we hope to be premiering at, at one of the bigger festivals in the spring. Um and we'll sort of make some decisions. Uh, you know, we're talking to some potential distributors and, and that sort of thing, and we'll sort of make make some decisions based on what festival we land at and, and what distributor we wind up with about a, a formal release, probably later on in 2016 at some point. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you actually have a band, uh, the Mississippi Tornadoes, and I, I actually heard you play. I, I listen on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, so is any of your music in the movie? Uh there is a song of mine in the movie. Uh, it's a song. I didn't write it with my band, the Mississippi Tornadoes, but sort of a, a, a group of musicians that I brought together. Uh, we called ourselves Lot, the Lot Lizards, <laughs> which is based on a line in the movie. The song is called Cross the Line, and it is uh, co-written by myself, my good friend Clifton Hyde, who is also the composer of the film, and another dear friend of mine, Varia. Uh, so that, that song is in the movie. I, I, I like to write a song for for every movie that I do, so the, the historian has an original song called Third Heaven in it that I wrote, mm-hmm. uh, and then this one has crossed the line on the soundtrack. That's very cool. Now, I know, you know, you you uh, you, you act in a lot of movies and, uh, and TV shows, and obviously write, direct. Um, which part of that is your favorite, or are they all just uh, creating to you? They're all incredibly rewarding in their own right. I mean, I, I got into this initially because I loved acting and um, my initial foray into writing and directing was in, in service of giving myself more acting opportunities, but I really have come to love directing. Um, I love working with actors. I love being in the editing room and, and honing the film. Um, so I, I don't know which one I would say. I mean, I would probably still say first and foremost, I'm an actor. Um, but I think maybe that's the thing that makes me an effective director because I know how to talk to actors how to get the performance out of the actors and, and actors seem to trust me because they know that I'm one of them, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. uh, and, um, and Hey, filmmaking is a collaborative effort. It's a team effort. It's, it's this organic thing that we're all contributing toward. So, um, I think the acting background has really helped me a great deal as a director. Yeah. Do you think, uh, directing ever helps you as an actor? Yes, absolutely. Because when you're sitting there and you're watching the performance on the monitor uh, you, you see what works, you see what doesn't work. Um, and so much of acting is trial and error anyway. Like you, you put yourself out there and say, ah, well, that didn't, that didn't quite sell. And, and so you try something else that sells a little better. But 
But as I said before, with the historians watching John Cullum and Bill Sadler and watching William Forsythe, Jeff Fahey, who's in our film, and David Warshawski and James Callis. Um, I mean, all these folks, have, they've been doing this a long time, and they're, they're incredibly skilled at what they do. So being so close to them and watching them do what they do uh, has been a real education for me as an actor, uh, watching it up close and, and, and seeing their little tricks and, and what they do to really dive into a role or sell a line has been incredibly educational for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really looking forward to the movie. Um, everything, um, all the other movies you mentioned and uh, what's about is really interesting to me. Uh, William Forsyth is in it, uh, who I'm a huge fan of. And uh, he's in one of the most underrated Bob movies of all time, Once Upon a Time in America. So I'm, uh, everything about yep. this sounds good. So I yep. he's, he's, and he's absolutely fantastic in this. I mean, the very showy role. If you love William Forsythe, you're gonna love watching him work in this film. Mm -hmm. well, I'm really looking forward to. It. I do have to mention one thing. Um, you are also uh, will be in, in Don't Kill It coming out sometime next year. Uh, our friend Mike Mendez uh, directed that with Dolph Lundgren, and you, you were in that as well. And so uh, it would be a totally different film, but I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, we just wrapped that, and I had a great time with Mike and, and Dolph, and that film should be a lot of fun. Totally different kind of movie, but uh, I think people are going to enjoy that one as well. Yeah. So uh, where can people uh, find you? Not like, like track you down and come to your house, but if they want to uh, <laughs> get into, <laughs> uh, you know, find you and, and follow you uh, on online. I'm at, I'm on Twitter at, at Miles underscore Doliac. That's at Miles underscore Doliac, M-I-L-E-S underscore D-O-L-E-A-C. The Hollow has its own Facebook page uh, and Twitter page, uh, at The Hollow M-S, that's at The Hollow Mississippi. Um, my production company, Historia Films, also has a Facebook page. So they can find me and, and message me on any of those sites. That's Historia, H-I-F-E-O-R-I-A, Films. Um, so, yeah, shoot me a message at any of those sites or places, and I'll get it. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you for coming on today, and I uh, really appreciate it, and looking forward to the movie. My absolute pleasure, Neil, anytime. Excellent. Hey, it's Joel David Moore, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. <laughs>